In our series on ritual objects, I would now like to talk about candles. Candles are used a lot in rituals and they have many purposes and also a great symbolic significance. Because the candle is not merely fire, because fire, flame is of course seen as a symbol of a spirit and also a symbol of transformation how in a way the base matter is turned into light, into energy, into heat. The candle, however, is not so much purely a symbol of fire, but much more a symbol of light. Because the light it gives off is not the dull red or the roaring of a flame, but it is very yellow, very whitish, so close to sunlight in a way. So the use of candles is very important if you're using the symbolism of light. If you want to bring light somewhere, if you want to create light in a certain place or a certain spot, you can do so by placing a candle there. And the candle, if you use it as a symbol of light, it can also be used to attract light, to invite light. And light in itself is again a symbol for higher worlds, higher powers, greater beings. So by lighting a candle, you're in a way creating a little doorway between yourself and a higher reality. And how you light the candles is also of, of importance. So my personal preference is usually to light the highest candle first, the candle which is representing the presence of the divine, the creator, the absolute, or otherwise of the god or goddess I'm working with. And after the central candle is lit, I use that fire to light all the other candles with it which represents, you could say, the lower tiers. Like if you have God the Creator, then you have the angels, the deities, the spirits, for instance. And um, by lighting that candle, you're also putting the, uh, you could say, the place of authority there. The central candle is very much where the power resides, which will govern or watch over the rest of the ritual. So usually also the central candle, the first one I light, is the one which is in front of the crucifix or the icon or the other thing which is representing the highest power within that ritual space. The candles can also be used in different shapes and in different colors. Personally, um, I don't adhere that much significance to it. For me, the symbol is also very much of the light. But uh, if you want, we can also, in a way, attune the candle a little bit to a different frequency, a different thing which it is emitting. So you could say that almost the fire burning on top of the candle is like the antenna and the rest of the candle um, is in a way the one which is emanating the rest of the energy. So you can work with just the flame as what I usually do. I focus on the flame, I try to look into the flame and by looking through the flame I try to see the deity or the other power which is behind that doorway. So I'm using the candle flame, but many people in their rituals also use the body of the candle. And by giving the candle a different shape or a different color, uh, also the energy which is in a way uh, able to flow through that body is different. So it acts a little bit like a filter or as a focus point to say exactly what energy you desire from the power which you're inviting when you're lighting the candle. Um, 
for me a personal uh, preference is usually to have bluish purplish candles to create an air of safety, an air of stability um, because the blue and the purple are very yeah, stabilizing, harmonizing energies. Uh, sometimes I also want to use uh, red candles because they help to also to stabilize uh, the client uh, by feeding the lower chakras, the base of the person and also the color red is also symbolizing a lot of warmth and the energy of the earth which is also a protective and supportive energy. So these are good energies to have in candles. Uh, some people like black candles because they help to create protection, to create safety, to obscure uh, yourself and what is going on. Um, Personally, I don't really enjoy working with yellow candles. Yellow is very much the solar energy, it is radiant, it's about power, it's about manifestation. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm not that showy. <laughs> um, another way to use the candle is basically to use it more for its fire symbolism. Um, so, burning candles in a space also helps to um, dispel the darkness, dispel the stale energies, the stale air which are there. So especially if you want to do a ritual in a place where the energy is a little bit polluted because there have been other healings taking place or the place itself has a history uh, or there are many spirits there who are in a way creating a certain atmosphere which is undesirable by burning candles there for a few hours also this energy becomes transformed and especially if you consecrate the candle before lighting it so that um, the energy which is put in the candle by the cons uh, consecration is then released by the burning then you can use a candle to charge your space with a specific energy so um, the act of consecration is in a way charging an object with a certain energy which is then either uh, used as a portal so the energy is coming out continually or in case of a candle which is released at the moment of burning. Um, the art of blessing is a whole other topic which I won't go into right now but uh, blessed candles often have uh, the imagery of, for instance, the patron saint to which they have been consecrated. Um, or if you're using in the shamanic tradition, they might have the shape or, for instance, oils of the uh, animal spirit um, which you want to work with. So these are ways of creating candles which are consecrated and which can then manifest the energy in that space. I have to be honest, I've never made a consecrated candle before using the physical components. I just bless them energetically. Um, but I would like to do that sometime. And it's a very interesting object to, um, to work with. If you have any experience with creating shamanic objects or with painting icons, you know that in the process of creating it, of preparing it, of in a way, cooking it. Uh, already the spirit is involved and it is working together with you and working through you. So you really weave uh, that energy into the very essence, into the very texture of, for instance, the potion you're preparing, the food you're preparing, the object you're making. And burning it in the form of a candle or sacrificing it in a fire is a way to release those energies again. Um, it is also possible sometimes to break or to rip an object also to release the energy, but this is far less common. Um, the last thing I want to say about the candles is also the constellation you place them in and the number. Um, what I like to do is to 
use the odd numbers if I want to create a motion in the energy and to use even numbers of candles if I want to create a more stable energy. Um, so 4 is of course the number of the world, the 4 elements. So I tend to use 4 candles if I really want to create a very stable ritual space. 5 the number of strength or 7 the number of harmony. Uh, 9 the number of completion are also very nice numbers to use if you're working in a numerology numerological fashion with the candles. The form you place them in can also help to enhance a certain space. So for instance if you're creating a labyrinth every point of light is an invitation to a power if you're using a northern labyrinth. Every point of light can represent a deity, an egregore, uh, a greater power in, within the labyrinth. So having a labyrinth walk at night with the candles as more or less the anchoring point for the energy can be very nice. Um, you can also use the candles to create a shape, create a circle, create a pentagram um, and this way you can also invite the powers into the ritual space by using the candle as a doorway for the powers to enter into the ritual space. If you use one central candle, for instance in a circle, this is often also very much a symbol of the power you want to uh, use to harmonize or to empower the circle. So candles have many uses and they're usually quite easy to use, easy to transport. So they're a great tool in working with healing spaces and empowering healing spaces and also empowering other symbols you place there. If you put objects there and you put a candle in the middle, then that candle is in a way also a focus point for all their energies. It helps to transform it and to focus it into a higher power. So by putting a candle in the middle of the things you are sacrificing, all the energies get collected, transmuted to a higher level. And you create a very nice little doorway to work with. Candles can also be used very much for the process of purification. You can take the energies you don't want and feed them to the fire or pull the energies out of the flame and use them to heal with. So it is very much a two-way door into other realms, into other worlds you can use. The magic of light it is great to work with. I hope you enjoy it.